So the sort of the crux of the presentation is working how much water you've got on your farm, how many sheep, and how long uh, this will last, and whether or not there's some action that you're required to take. Key points, uh, why hold sheep? And that's purely profit based. Water stock take, what are the key things you need to know to do a water stock take across your farm? What water needs both uh, quality and quantity uh, for different classes of stock? With that knowledge, then design, if you've got an issue designing an exit strategy uh, for it in, with the water management plan in mind. Uh, and with that exit strategy, obviously, made of use are the engine room of any exit strategy. So your sheep are still profitable, uh, so this is compass data across 10 years and a gross margin per DSE up the side. You've been in it, you understand that sheep have been a lot more profitable in the four years than the previous 10. Uh, and then the red one is a forecast margin for 2020-21 with wool at uh, 650, <coughs> uh, sweep the board. And I know it went up a bit over a dollar yesterday, so that might be a little bit higher. So how do you undertake a water stock take? So some of the key things you need to know uh, or is knowledge and observation. So obviously you've been on the lands, you've had those dams for a long time, you've got a rough idea of the quality and the quantity of each store and joining your farm. So that's the number one first step is your knowledge you already have. Uh, evaporation rates, so from now until the 1st of June, about one and a half metres of that dam or water source will evaporate on average. So you think about that times across all the, all the storages on your farm, it's a lot of water. Uh, then there's a 15% residual in the bottom of every dam that's not, not fit for consumption and generally that's because it gets too boggy. Now there's been a lot of dams cleaned out in the last couple of years so maybe that might be a little bit less but generally that bottom bit is not usable unless you can pump it to another dam before it's dry. Uh, then if you're using bores, knowing a safe pumping rates from bores, so if you're under pressure and you have to pump more water, uh, what is the safe pumping rates? And then past experiences from long dry spells, and that's it's a bit like dry seasons, you've, the skills of managing that, you've had been forced upon you because we've had more dry summers. Uh, so water stock take, so you can set up and fill out a table like this, so effectively it's each dam on your property and how much water capacity you have. So yeah, it's a width, length and a depth and using 0.4 to account for the slopes of the dam. So you've got dams that aren't square or rectangle. There's some good resources via the Depot website. Uh, if you've got round dams, gully dams, uh, you can use to work, work out the capacity of each dam. And uh, yeah, if you're looking at the depth, you have lots of ways to do it, but this probably is the simplest way. Uh, it's just a rope in the middle with a tie each, each metre, you're not sure. So what are the stock water requirements uh, for each class on your farm? So weaners are the consumption two to four litres. Uh, adult dry sheep, two to six litres. And lactating ewes, uh, four to ten litres. And then there's a the maximum salinity. Each of these classes stock can handle it. So what are the, some of the factors, the, the quality factors that dictate how much water your sheep might drink or how much water they might need. So number one is increased salinity equals increased consumption. So the, the salt in their diet, uh, they'll drink more water. Hot weather, so hot weather they'll drink more water. So on this slide, you dry sheep two to six litres. There was a guy at um, our first workshop who had actually measured this over a week and they drank eight litres for the week. And that was 40 degrees pretty much for five days in a row. So that's the capacity that they can actually drink if eight litres a day. Eight litres a day, yeah. And that was dry sheep on troughs. So very <coughs> late gross. Uh, distance to feed, uh, more walking equals more water consumption. It's just like us, if we run around, uh, we're going to drink more water. Uh, type of feed, high protein lupin stubbles uh, means more water consumption. So the higher the protein in the diet, the more water they'll drink. Uh, and it's the same with sheep grazing salt bush. Uh, the higher salt content means that water consumption will be increased. So high protein, you normally put young sheep on there, they can't walk as far either. So if you've got young sheep on 
smoking or high protein uh, feed sources. Uh, they need lots of water and can't be too far away from uh, water structures. So I touched on this before, but yeah, boggy bottoms and dam, dam edges uh, limit how much uh, use they get out of that dam. So if they've got boggy edges and you can pump them into another dam, it's an efficient use of the water. Uh, production profile of those particular sheep that you're trying to uh, water. So higher production equals higher water consumption. That's purely because they're eating more. So the more dry matter they eat, uh, the more water they uh, require. Uh, so you can see like feedlot lambs will drink more than a merino ewe lamb out in the paddock over the summer. If you've got crossbred lambs that you try to pump along, uh, they will eat more uh, and drink more. Uh, class of animals, so first slide I showed was lactating use uh, because they're producing milk, uh, they need more water. So that's got implications obviously for time of lambing. Uh, if you're lambing in July, August, it's probably not an issue because uh, the feed's got plenty of water in it. Uh, dams generally aren't empty, but if you're lambing in March, uh, what's the implications there? Breed, so if you're running a lot of British breed sheep, they will drink 20% more water. Uh, salinity, so this is as far as the pond goes, salinity is the chloride in the water. Hardness is, can be an issue, uh, probably not a massive issue in our area, but the hardness is probably more of an issue if you're using it for spray water rather than stock water. Uh, water temp, so the water really needs to be lower than their body temperature, so 37 degrees. Uh, if it's not, they won't want to drink it. Uh, so that's the implications obviously for the size of the water structure. If it's deeper, if it's take water for longer than if it's shallower. Uh, algae, uh, which can be controlled with, or sort of probably the biggest one is a blue green algae, which can actually kill the sheep if it's in the water source. Uh, can be controlled with chemicals such as simazine or ferric. Uh, um, and also, cereal straw inhibits the growth. So, put a small bale of barley straw or a bag of barley straw into the dam as a preventative measure. Uh, pH of 6.5 to 8.5 is the range that the stock water should be in. Anywhere outside that, the sheep are just unlikely to drink it. And if they don't want to drink it, obviously their production is going to go backwards pretty rapidly. Uh, so the one that is sort of, there's not as much science behind is some of the pathogens that are in the water. So if you've got water that doesn't look right, water you wouldn't drink, it's smelly. Uh, it's probably been contaminated by feces on the dam bank. So it's present on pretty much all farms where sheep are run. So and the two major ones are uh, Guardian uh, Cryptosporidium. Uh, so if you really think it's an issue, I think Myrtle, Myrtle Uni can test the water, uh, but there's not actually a lot you can do about it. You can't get, there's nothing you put in the dam to kill these organisms, uh, or you can take it, or you can just move the sheep. Uh, and their research has shown it affects growth rates and live weights. So if it looks and smells off, and you wouldn't put your mouth near it, it's likely to be affecting the sheep's growth in some way, whether or not that's significant is really unknown. But you think about probably the implications of a young growing sheep rather than how we use it already in good condition. So how much stock water is required over summer? Down the side is the stock class, so ewes, ewe hoggets, weather hoggets, rams. Uh, how many have got their water requirements uh, times the amount of days you've got left in summer. Pretty much total all that up and it's uh, equal to total requirements. Uh, for your system over summer. And we, before we worked out the total water volume you, you've got usable on the farm. So if you're using troughs, uh, which some people do use troughs for water, uh, rough rule of thumb is 30 centimetres plus one and a half centimetres per sheet uh, for a one-sided trough. But flow and pressure is as or more important than the access to the trough, particularly with older sheep. Uh, so, so an example, you've got a thousand sheep in a mob, how big a trough do you need? Uh, so if you've got a double sided trough, it's about 7.7 .7 metres in length. Uh, if you've got the flow and the pressure to fill that trough off up when a thousand sheep come in the water in the morning and the afternoon. So we can roughly work out the quality of water on hand. So I'll run it through a spreadsheet in a minute, but the assumptions I'm going to use in that is evaporation is one and a half metres. Uh, which we don't know the size of every dam, so we're going to use 25% of the water in every dam uh, is evaporated and we can 
tweak that number. Uh, residual that's unsuitable uh, for the stock consumption, uh, 15%, uh, gives you a total water accessible. So we know how much is there, we know how much is going to evaporate, we know how much is left at the bottom that you can't use. So the next point is the quantity of water required for the flock. So we can work out, we know how many sheep are going to run over the summer, roughly what they can drink uh, per day times the amount of days in summer. So after you work those two things out, A, is there action required? What do we do? B, no action required, obviously it's uh, business as usual. So some of the major things, so if there is action required, what are some of the things you can do, apart from obviously the major one is actually selling them, but uh, things like time of lambing, so the implication between a summer lambing and a winter lambing, uh, the proportion of dry and lactating sheep in your system uh, to lactating ewes drink more. Uh, can we reduce it by having more dry sheep in the system? Uh, the proportion of ewes made it to a terminal sire. So obviously crossbred lambs generally exit the system much quicker and aren't there over summer. So that's not going to help you between now and, and June. But if, if you're in that crossbred system, it probably would or it will help you next summer. Uh, and also potential lambing rates, obviously the higher lambing rates, particularly the merinos. You keep those merino lambs for or the ewe lambs all summer, and where the lambs maybe for summer to summer, there's more of them, they're going to drink more water. Yeah, so I would say, so if you, with a crossbred system, so if you're 100% merinos right now, you've got 100% merino lambs on the ground, or 105, or 110%, whatever you might have got. But if you've got 30% crossbreds, then 30% crossbred lambs are probably ready to go or gone or not far from going, so you don't have those particular lambs in the system. Uh, same with the weather lambs. So in the example we'll run is the weather lambs will all be there for summer, but potentially that is that is a levy you can pull to re reduce the requirements. <coughs> oh yeah, yeah. So if we do it the typical system, thousand hectares of pasture uh, winter graze at 10 DSC, so if we enter those numbers in. And yeah, so the lead, all the rest are the same. So 50% uh, used to crossbreds for this example, 90% landing rates and merinos and crossbreds. Uh, this system is selling 50% of weathers uh, prior to the break of next season, so that's an annual thing. So, And then the landing rate is in June. So you can see. This is the number where we're interested in, 15,000 kilolitres of water. So that's the total water required in the dams right now to run this block structure through the next season, or through the 1st of June next year, when hopefully they don't require water anymore. So some of the things we can switch to change, so we so just change the land percentage area to 110. So, yeah, both. So you can see it makes a small difference to the amount of water. So <coughs> moving from 90 to 110% lambs uh, requires a small amount of extra water. Uh, if we sell 100% of the weather, so weather lambs are gone <coughs> every year. Yeah, so it doesn't actually change it much. And the reason because a weather lamb is one DSC, and a U is one half DSC. So even though the weather lamb drinks <coughs> less water, so you've got one weather lamb drinks six or say four litres a day, and it's worth one DSC. A U drinks six litres a day, she's worth one half DSC. So per DSC, the water consumption is required. Stays static. So then that comes down to what you can actually make a high profit off. Is that off a, a weather lamb that you retain, or is it off a made of you? I think you know the answer, but we'll hear me for now. The major one is the lambing date. Uh, so this same one to March, and then we'll switch from March to. So you see, March is gone. So it's 3,000 extra, 3, extra kilolitres of water. So by going from a winter lambing to a summer lambing, you need 3,000 kilolitres of water for this particular, particular flock.
Yeah, so some of the things you can do for an exit strategy. So if you're a March blamer, what flock to retain, what flock structure to retain. Uh, but remembering for any system, limiting any damage is keeping as many major views in the system and as reducing the dry sheep in the system. Uh, and then secondly is time of landing. So as far as the flock structure goes, so if we have to, so water is an issue, uh, we have to reduce sheep numbers, so you can't pull any of the other levers, you're already a July, August lambber, no, you're selling lots of weathers. Uh, the last lever to pull is to sell the flock down. So which class of sheep uh, would you be best off selling? So these are ewes, so we've got uh, the age of the ewes up the side, so one and a half year old, two and a half, all about six and a half year old. Uh, and a rough lot, as a live weight here from 42 kilos to 56. But the column we're most interested in is the landing percentage. So maidens, 95, 96%. Uh, then we've got a three and a half at 118 percent, four and a half, 122. Then it drops back down to 105 and 106 percent, five and a half and six and a half year old ewes. So if you have to quit a line of ewes because you just don't have the water, which is the better line to quit? Uh, so really, these ones in the middle are the ones you want to retain. The higher potential landing, uh, they're the ones that are going to drive your flock going into the future. And then after that, these ones that are 105, 106, older ewes, not going to be in the flock much longer, do you sell them? Or do we come down and pull out a stack of maidens to sell? They're quite hot at the moment, so can you sell a portion of maidens without actually uh, reducing the total amount of lambs that you're going to have? If you sell a select age group of ewes, there'll be 16% less water required. So a normal flock structure, so five years made up to merinos, six years made up to crossbreds. If you sell one age group a use, 16% less water across the whole system. And then as followed before, keeping 100% weather lambs, it's 3% less water required, so it's not really a lever too full. And then if you are an April lamb, I'm shifting from April to June, it's 12% less water required. So if you think you've got an issue with your water situation on your farm, so first thing is to do is a stock water take. So um, I think DWA actually have Tracy will show they've actually got some money to help out with that if you want some help with that. But number one thing is the stock take of the water resources. How much is there? Yes, if you've got an issue, how much is out there? Uh, and we know these water situations happen incrementally. We didn't get to today and all of a sudden we're short on water. Um, it's like a poor season, they happen incrementally. Uh, what tactics can you actually use now? Uh, what levers can you pull? Uh, when will these tactics be employed? So, just like a dry seasons uh, tactics, when, what are the timings of when sheep have to go out of the system? Remembering, if you hold, the longer you hold a sheep that you're thinking about selling, the more water it's consuming, but later in the summer, the stock, the, the three and a half year old ewes you want to keep, uh, you're not going to compromise how much water they've got late in summer. Uh, and what and who? Uh, so what are the mechanics of actually employing this tactic? There's a multi-people business who are, who's actually in charge of monitoring the system and pulling the lever uh, when required. So it's like any plan, requires a review, revise, repeat. So you've had a little bit of practice over the last couple of years, so uh, it's just what worked over the last two summers, now what else can you do? And some of the next speakers will give you a bit of an idea of what other tactics to actually generate more water there is. So what are the key points from today? Uh, sheep is still profitable, uh, $32 a DSC, uh, with a wool increase this week, so it might be $35, $36 a DSC. Uh, how to do a water stock take? Uh, how much water do you need on your farm, both the quality and quantity, depending on what class of stock uh, you want to run over the next summer? Uh, do you have a shortage? Um, maybe if you're quartering, you probably don't have a shortage. Uh, but if you're Eastern Wagen or Arthur River, potentially there is a shortage. Uh, developing an exit strategy uh, for water management. Uh, working out are there any levers to pull uh, other than 
uh, selling down motor duties. So motor duties are the last option because so they're the engine room of the system going forward.